Algebra 2 Honors, Lesson 13.3, Trigonometric Functions of General Angles. Tremendous amount in this lesson. I'm going to jump right in. I apologize. I like to explain things better when I can. So, first things first, a lot of people say, hey, I've got an introduction to the unit circle. I don't understand what if I'm not on the unit circle. So we'll start with that today. Um, we want to find the six trigonometric functions that would go through the point 5, negative 12. Uh, so 5, negative 12 is about here. And I drew a small one because it's going to be a lot easier to draw a bigger one. Just as a quick review, it's in the fourth quadrant. And the line would be drawn like this. The angle is always drawn here. If we were in the first quadrant, it's here here, here, always to the nearest x-axis. Worlds of confusion for this, and I'm not sure why. X-axis. X-axis dominates in mathematics. Get used to it. So just to make it a little bit easier to see, I'm going to blow up the fourth quadrant, and we're going to put our theta there. And we know this is the point 5, negative 12, means it goes 5 over and negative 12 down. If you can do the Pythagorean theorem, you quickly derive that this is 13. Now, 13 is always positive. These numbers are whatever they are. They might be positive, they might be negative, because they represent coordinates. They also represent distances, but since we're putting it on the unit, the uh, coordinate plane, you have to think, where do they go? 13 is not a coordinate. It's a distance. It's always positive. So now it's actually pretty easy. Sine of theta. And at this point, a lot of people say, whoa, I forgot. i got to write this down. And that's not a bad idea. But I'm going to roll through it. Sine of theta, negative 12 over 5. Cosine of theta, Five over thirteen, tangent of theta, negative twelve over five, cosecant of theta, negative five over twelve, secant of theta, thirteen over five, cotangent of theta, negative five over twelve. So you just flip each one. A lot of people struggle on that. I know I've done it before. I know I'm a math teacher, but this is not that challenging. Keep your theta to the x-axis. Do your little Pythagorean theorem. You're good to go. As an example, we're in quadrant 3, and we know what secant equals. So it's like a little puzzle. Quadrant 3 is down here. So I have no idea what the point is. But I know it's going to look like that because we're in quadrant 3. Secant goes with cosine, so I'm going to put it in the middle of the page. I'm going to do Sokotoa across the top again. Secant goes right here. The negative is on top, but it could go with the bottom one. We'll sort that out in a little bit. I've talked before to people, I can't work with secant. However, I can work with cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. All right, and flip that. Negative 3 over 4. Adjacent. Hypotenuse. Opposite. So adjacent, negative 3 over hypotenuse. Is the hypotenuse positive? Yes. Is this supposed to be negative here? Yes. Don't get caught in this trap. This is not 5. We have to do a little math here. Opposite squared plus negative 3 squared equals 4 squared. Opposite squared equals 16 minus 9, 7. This is root 7. Positive or negative? Negative. 
check it. 9 plus 7 is 16. Looks good to me. Now I can do sine of theta. Sine is opposite negative root 7 over hypotenuse. Tangent of theta is negative root 7 over negative 3. So I can get rid of the negatives. Cosecant of theta, 4 over negative root 7, rationalize it, put the negative up top, just because we do, negative 4 root 7 over 7. As you get better at this, you should be able to just write that in, negative 4 root 7 over 7. If you need to rationalize it, that's perfectly fine. Same here, 3 root 7 over 7. So now I'm taking what was a fairly complex problem and made it even more complex. But remember, get in the quadrant, draw it to the x-axis, get it to sine cosine tangent, and you're off to the races. What about a spot right on the axis? Well this is actually a wildly complicated concept. First time I saw it I was totally confused by it. I'll show the magic of the unit circle real quick. We'll go out and touch unit circle, meaning that the hypotenuse is 1. The angle always goes to the x-axis. So sine of theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse. In this case, it's just opposite, because hypotenuse is 1 which is the magic of the unit circle. Now when I say this point is, and I'm just guessing what it would be, uh, 0 0.6, 0 0.4, we just figured out this is the sine value because we're dividing by 1. So sine of theta equals 0.4. And that means this has to be the cosine value adjacent over 1 going to give us just 0 0.6. So we figured it out. The x value is cosine, the y value is sine. Now I got to come back over here because I used up all my room. So we know sine of theta is the y value 1. Cosine theta is the x value 0. Tangent, that's tricky. Tangent is going to be opposite over adjacent. Wait a minute. We just said opposite is sine, adjacent is cosine. So we have just derived one of our formulas, one of our identities used much later. Tangent is sine over cosine. So in this case, tangent is 1 over 0. Whoops, can't do that. Undefined. Therefore, cosecant is 1 over 1. Secant is 1 over 0. And cotangent, instead of 1 over 0, it's 0 over 1. It's just going to be 0. That's extraordinarily challenging. As we get into the unit circle, we'll go through that again try and help everybody out understand what the heck's going on. So that's really it. There's this weird little concept called the reference angle and we've already covered it. If I ask for 30 degrees and I say it's on the unit circle, that's 1. If I ask for 150 degrees And I say it's on the unit circle. Remember, I said always draw it to the x. So this is 150 degrees. All of it's 180. This must be 30 degrees. This is 1. So a reference angle means draw it to the closest x-axis. And then you can just treat it as if it's 30 degrees instead of 150, with one exception. 
this is one, this is a 30, 60, 90. Sorry, I just lost my pen. Thirty, sixty, ninety. Short side is half the hypotenuse. Long side is root three times the short side. We have sine of thirty equals one half. Cosine of thirty equals root three over two. How about sine and cosine for this one? Well, this is also one half. And this is also root three over two, except now that we're in second quadrant, this is negative. So you have to be aware of this when you use a reference angle. Sine of 150 hasn't changed. One half. Makes sense. We're in the y-axis, sine is the y value. Cosine of 150, the sine should be flipped, and it is negative root 3 over 2. We can go and find the rest of the trig values, but it really doesn't matter. Tangent will be sine over cosine. Flip them for all the other ones. More practice on that. So this is a classic... In the first quadrant, everything's positive. And we just deal with sine, cosine, and tangent. They're all positive. Everything's positive. Since sine goes with y, sine is the only thing that is positive in the second quadrant. Cosine will be negative. Tangent will be negative. In the fourth quadrant, I know I'm jumping. Cosine is the only one that's positive because it's the x value. x is positive over there. So sine will be negative and tangent will be negative. In the third quadrant, sine and cosine are both negative. Since tangent is sine over cosine, tangent is positive, but sine and cosine are negative. You do not need to know this. It's just kind of nice. All students take calculus. Worst mnemonic ever. Sorry, we're stuck with it. But it helps us when we're doing a problem. We say, whoa, sine's positive and cosine's negative. Oh, we're in the second quadrant. Sine's negative and cosine's negative. Oh, we're in the third quadrant. It just helps. Enough of this. Plenty to keep you busy. Good luck and happy mathing.